Hey everyone and welcome to today's color and chat video. I, I'm planning on doing the best coloring advices I heard about, I get, I gathered during the three years I have been coloring. So be prepared that I will be talking your ears off <laughs> during the next hour or so. And um, I just really want you to, sh I would really want to share with you um, my so-called basic knowledge I, I learned about coloring and what is my attitude towards coloring and how it changed over the years. So I hope you will find this video um, useful. I will start with you know telling you my opinion about coloring, uh, how I started, um, what are my best uh, tips and tricks, uh, how I uh, keep myself engaged and motivated during coloring because as you know there are sometimes um, lows and ups when you feel more like coloring, less like coloring, you start to question yourself. So that will be the first part and the second part I will share my coloring basics of how I use my pencils, what are my main um, coloring supplies I use and what are the most important factors you have to keep in mind <coughs> when you color. So while I'm talking your ears off I will be doing some coloring here in Twilight Garden by Maria Trolle and uh, you know back to basics <coughs> back to an easy easier page and I'm gonna use <coughs> sorry my voice um, polychromos because I haven't used them in a while so and I'm really eager to you know play with them so I'm starting with light green and I will bring you bring you in closer I'm sorry for the background noise it was all but quiet before I started streaming I mean um, recording so <coughs> yeah can't really do anything about that okay so as I said before um, January this year January is exactly <coughs> my third year anniversary of coloring and I have been streaming now for hmm, one and a half years, more or less. And um, I remember everything was really, really new. I had no idea there is a color tube out there, um, that there are coloring videos from which you can actually learn. So when I found them three years ago, in the beginning of January, I was instantly hooked <coughs> and I needed all the advice I can get uh, to start on coloring and one of the main things one of the most important um, <coughs> yeah mm, yeah thing I learned about coloring and crafting is that it should be fun for you no matter at what level you color, how often you color, as long as you are enjoying it, you are golden. And that was one of the main things that really got me into coloring is that there was no pressure. Um, it, was, it is not a competition. Uh, I have to be honest with you guys, at first I wasn't uh, comfortable at all with um, sharing my coloring on Instagram or on Facebook or anywhere but um, the more I colored the more videos I watched um, the more um, coloring pages I saw I realized I'm not that bad so why not share it now I'm going for leaf green and that's when a really awesome thing happened. I realized uh, that um, people are very friendly out there in the community and if you ask, you will get support. So <coughs> back to um, 
the first step. Um, always keep in mind that coloring, crafting should be fun, shouldn't be done for pressure. And always ask yourself, what is your main purpose of coloring? Why have you picked up those pencils? Um, you know, as many as we are here on ColorTube, um, so many reasons there are for us to start um, uh, starting coloring. There are those who, you know, um, started coloring for easing um, their pain or when they have some medical conditions. I started coloring because I was really burnt out um, with my studies, with my uh, PhD back then and I really needed something to unwind. And slowly but steadily it turned into something um, bigger and it took over my life, <laughs> at least my hobby life, so to speak. So, um, number two of the tips I learned is own your art, be proud of your colorings, um, no one else can do it for you. Um, you are the boss of your coloring book and no one is entitled to judge uh, what you color. And um, to feel creative, you have to let go of judgment. Judgment and fear and uh, comparison comparison to other people or other pe other people's work is pretty much the death of crea creativity, uh, sap green. I say that because I'm, I can be um, very um, competitive. Uh, I learned that during <laughs> university, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to stand up and own your work and um, compare yourselves to others to get better. I don't think that's the case here in coloring and in crafting. Um, because if you judge yourself or others, fear will take its toll and then creativity stops. And creativity as we know it is the use of original ideas and inspiration to create something new, something inventive. <clears throat> and I find if I, if I go down comparison lane, uh, my creativity stops immediately. And one of the best things I love about coloring is that you get in the flow. Uh, you stop thinking and you just go with your colors um, without realizing that you are actually, <laughs> you know, changing colors or um, finding out new colors. And as you go, new ideas will come to you. So that's my tip number two. <clears throat> Yes, um, <clears throat> I learned the difference um, that there is a huge, huge difference between comparison and um, inspiration, seeking inspiration. It is, in my view, totally <coughs> okay and fine um, to look through social media, uh, look at other people's work and gain inspiration from others as long as you are not <coughs> um, constantly comparing yourselves to others. So those two things are different and even um, um, between um, being judgmental towards your art or being um, or showing constructive criticism 
are two different things in my view. Um, <clears throat> constructive criticism towards yourself um, can help you to get to to get a better uh, colorist to evolve. But if that only happens with you know um, pulling yourself down, that's not helping anyone. So this is what I think. Okay. And um, first, you know, um, I was convinced that coloring and going back to light green <coughs> is, is something you do alone. It's something that you you do in your room alone um, in your free time and that uh, changed um, that view of me of my mind changed uh, when I found the uh, color tube and YouTube I realized that I'm not alone out there I can uh, seek advice um, from others <coughs> that um, it is okay to be a coloring addict, addict. And even though you are um, coloring alone at home with streams, um, with um, uh, talking to other people on Instagram, watching Instagram, um, watching videos like color and chat videos, joining live streams, you get to know people and you learn a lot from others and that's my next advice gather around positive um, supporting people and <coughs> how should I say that nicely <laughs> um, don't um, don't um, spend your energy on negative <coughs> energy vampires because that won't help you and I find that our community is really huge um, we have very nice supporting people uh, streamers colorists all around the world so I found that I'm not so um, so to say strange <laughs> than people in my um, environment thought at first because usually um, the majority of colorists um, don't have coloring friends I mean in in real life in their in their vicinity but with <coughs> internet thank god that changed a lot now I'm going for um, sub green again one uh, six seven so um, as I said before get around positive people get your fair share of positive feedback and give back don't forget uh, to give back uh, like people back um, comment a page if you if you like it <coughs> don't comment if you don't like it <laughs> just um, just keep in mind that we are all human and we are putting ourselves um, out there with our colorings and our videos and I have a Facebook group recommendation for you guys um, made by the lovely Reading with Pax Jan. This is the Reading with Pax coloring group. Uh, you can join on Facebook. Uh, as you can see, it has pretty, pretty lot um, members, and uh, I will put the link in the description below. So everything I'm talking about today, you will find in the description below as well. So go out there, join Facebook groups. If you feel like it, you are not alone. Okay. 
Next tip. Um, I used to beat up myself for coloring slowly. <laughs> and those who know me are, you know, already laughing because I'm still annoyed sometimes that I'm slow, but only because I'm, I'm, I'm streaming. And you know, when you are streaming, you want to show as much as you can in as little time as possible. But when I'm not coloring on stream, um, only for myself, I'm very slow. And I like it that way because um, it gets me in the right state of mind. Um, that's how I work, uh, although I'm, I'm getting faster than in the beginning. We can, we can say that uh, for sure, but still, um, I know I'm quite slow compared to others and that's okay. And if you're a fast colorist, that's okay too. Don't beat, your, beat yourself up for that. Um, we are all different. We work on different levels. We use different mediums. Um, as long as you enjoy what you see, um, you are golden. So if anyone tells you that you color too slowly, too, don't take it or you color too fast. Okay. 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 So next leafy, light green. This is fun. Mm. Yeah. Um that's a question I get get I got a lot of times. How how do you got to know uh, what you like? Um, what coloring books um, would you prefer for me to get? Well, I can tell you what you like. That's my first. And um, the only way to find out if you like portraits, if you like flowers, if you like, you know, um, not realistic pages or if you like you know buildings to color is that you go out there and experiment i bought a lot of books in the beginning i'm not even touching anymore because you know my mm, my likings um, changed <clears throat> so Be brave, get out there and try new things. That's the only way you will know what you like. And it will come, it won't come overnight. It will come with time. <clears throat> go up there, go on YouTube, watch hundreds of <laughs> um, flip throughs. <clears throat> try maybe some PDFs if you don't want to invest into a whole coloring book. There is a new PDF coloring pages word out there on Etsy. Um, to try out um, new products. Um, for instance, I didn't know if I liked the pan pastels until I tried them. I was pretty much afraid of them and now I love them. <clears throat> and and after you get more um, acquainted to your coloring supplies, um, it might change over time what you, you know, prefer to use. Use coloring, uh, I mean a colored pencil, use watercolors, use pastels, whatever, everything goes. Or do some mixed media with collaging. So many possibilities out there. So. Go out there onto YouTube and jump into <laughs> jump onto the temptation wagon, as Jan would say. Okay. Um, another thing I got asked, um, and I find it um, 
uh, you will you will let me know what you think I you know I made some color along videos on my channel and I got some people asking if I was okay uh, with them following along my video and sharing their um, their process on Instagram or is it okay that that I will um, video the same picture you colored last week and I, of course and I genuinely think that learning from others following color alongs isn't cheating it's um, learning and um, even if you don't tag the person I wouldn't say that's a terrible thing if you feel like you want to tag um, for example if you colored along a page and um, you want to let the uh, youtuber know that you followed along um, usually youtubers are happy to see um, I feel honored if I see someone wanting to color what I colored or how I colored it and if you are still um, you know hmm, not sure just tag the person just write down in the comments or in your description uh, which video you used and you are golden so videos pictures are out there for you to to get inspiration and to learn <clears throat> So this is what I think about this question. Okay, awesome. And now um, we reach the part when I will show you some basic color pencil tricks or what I use every day. So when it comes to using colored pencils, there are a lot of ways to, to blend or to put down color on the paper. Um, we call um, the process where we um, merge or layer or burnish colors together blending. And there are <clears throat> more than one ways. So the first one and the one I used the most and was one of the more difficult things to learn is layering. And I'm gonna, what I'm using, yeah? I will go for a Prismacolor um, Spring Green to show you how I layer or how I learned layering, what, what are the most important aspects. So when you are layering, that means that you are using minimal pressure with your pencil to build up multiple layers. Um, and applying pressure, um, the more pressure you apply to your layers, um, that will limit the layers you can apply on top. So the more layers you add, the darker, um, the the image will look and one of the first things i learned about layering is that you can control your pressure with how close you hold your pencil the closer uh, to the to the tip the closer um, your um, fingers are to the tip um, the harder pressure you will apply so if you put your fingers a little bit further away, you will um, automatically um, use a lighter pressure. So this is the one of the best advices I can give you. Also, holding the pencil to the side, as I do here, see to the side, um, helps you with the really light layers and it gives you more control 
as opposed to the more vertical you hold your pencils, the less control you will have in terms of pressure. Like this is like vertical and the more um, on the side you hold your pencil, the more control you gain. And I always, or I try to use a sharp pressure. To get with the, with the sharp tip, you get into the crevices of the paper. So less white grain uh, will show through. closer now and at the very end your well my aim is to get rid of the white grains of the paper and I also use circular motions which are like this this and this you may not see it but there are uh, small circles in there and um, coloring uh, with circular motions also mean that you are filling the paper with every possible angle in every uh, possible angle um, I always turn my page it makes it easier for me to stay in line And you can also rotate your pencil while you are coloring. This way, uh, this means that you won't have to sharpen as much. It will be easier to hold the tip of the pen if you rotate your pencil every few seconds. And I'm adding layer on layer on layer now I will put down a little bit more pressure just to get one side of the uh, circle darker Um, I <clears throat> when I started coloring I used to uh, have a very hard I used to apply very hard pressure to the paper uh, which resulted in um, um, of course the tip uh, one wouldn't stay as sharp as it would with um, with rotating your pencil and using circular motions and um, after a few hours my hands would really hurt and I had to take a few days off from coloring now with learning how to apply pressure lightly I can um, I don't have this problem anymore that's the best way to put it really so it really helps okay and I learned um, layering blending with Prisma colors I believe Prisma colors are one of the best uh, pencils to go for as a beginner to learn layering burnishing blending okay so that was layering and now to burnish <clears throat> I'm gonna use um, olive green a darker color for this burnishing means that you apply uh, quite a lot of pressure in order to flatten out the tooth, the tooth of the paper. You are basically merging colors together with a medium to hard pressure. Okay, so let's see. Oops. Now I'm not, uh, yeah, not layering, but. 
pressing down with a medium uh, pressure and with burnishing my main aim is to um, get a really dark highly contrasted version of the color and yeah we will see in a second just have to concentrate I I all I don't burnish really much it makes my uh, hands hurt after a time see I'm applying pressure and uh, keep in mind to always go um, the opposite direction as well see even with burnishing I am holding my pencil to the side then I will press down color it hurts um, for as long as we get rid of the white of the paper. And opposite direction. Um, both have pros and cons, burnishing or layering. I have seen beautiful art done with burnishing, <clears throat> also with layering. Uh, for me, um, layering is the most used um, uh, method, but I also use burnishing sometimes, for example, for backgrounds or yeah, something I want to be really dark. So see, compared, see the white grains here, and yeah, it's hardly any grains anymore. So, but this paper is drawing paper, so it's quite um, textured. On softer papers, there wouldn't be any white left right now. Okay, so this is the very very basic. You can also, um, if I wanted, I could add um, a solvent um, to blend the colors even more together. I don't like solvent, I, I never use it. Uh, I don't even use a blender pencil. I could if I wanted to, but not really my style. Okay, another thing you will need when starting on um, is a good sharpener. I swear on the Tigal multi sharpener. Um, you can adjust the the tip how long it should be. You have five options, which is awesome. This is one of my favorites, and I also like the Derwent uh, mini uh, sharpener as well. This makes um, long, really long and sharp um, tips. While the Tigo, for example, I usually use the free, makes a nice middle point. See how sharp it is? It, it, you could hurt someone with that. You don't do that, right? Just joking. You don't do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another thing is getting a good eraser. I love my Tombow Mono plastic eraser and my Dervent battery operated eraser to get into small crevices. All the links are in the description below. Okay, next thing uh, we need to talk about is paper. What paper shall I use? Well, the answer is quite complex. Just getting the stuff I need in it. Just putting away the pencils. I have a lot of stuff around here. I will show you my favorite, but a 
as I said before, you need to experiment and see for yourself what you like. That's why it is so important to know your mediums. You will get the best effect and your coloring will be much more enjoyable if you color on paper you like. Okay, so usually in coloring books we don't have the choice <laughs> of paper. Maybe you can buy um, artist editions of some books which are on higher quality or thicker paper but usually paper in the coloring books are given. So what you can do is choose a test page or choose the last page of the book and try out your mediums before you go on to a, a coloring page. Um, some paper takes water pretty well even when they look um, thin or when who those ah, 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 sorry <laughs> I'm talking too quickly and it's morning I'm so sorry so even if the paper looks or feels thin it could take paper very nicely like Kirby Roseanne's books I'm showing you my current whip um, this is all watercolor base. Um, I don't have pencils on top yet. Um, this is the next thing I will do. And um, the paper gets a little bit bumpy, but I really don't mind and it bleeds through. But I like my papers mm, this way, or I don't mind if they are bumpy. It means that they are well loved. So always check your coloring book before you go into. I personally love the paper in Serene. It's awesome paper. And um, I like the paper in the Kirby books and in the Hanna, no Hanna, Clara Markova books. The, those are great. Okay, next. Uh, my favorite paper for dry medium, colored pencil only is the Strathmore colored pencil paper. Doesn't take water really well. So that's the first. <coughs> if you like coloring um, or with multiple layers and you like portraits, the tone tan is awesome um, for coloring faces. And it takes a lot of layers and I love my Lumis Prismas on them, such as toned grey. And um, if you like to play with water colours, um, this one is a not so cheap but not very expensive alternative. Um, I bought the A3 version because I can um, cut them into two halves and I get two A4s so it's more price worthy for your money. So this is I believe a 300 gram paper. <coughs> um, um, thick paper like that might or will not go through your regular printer. You have to go to a Mm, print shop to get your coloring pages onto aquara paper. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> we have one, two, three more, nine, no, four more um, tips to go through. So, another question I got recently which is more important when it comes to coloring supplies? Quality or quantity. Um, for me, my personal opinion, you might not agree, is that quality wins the race on the long run. Um, you have to find the golden balance um, trying out tools. Um, you know the best what you can or can't afford. Um, 
you can find, um, for example, prismas, I believe, are um, pretty much affordable for everyone. It's, they are really cheap in the US compared to Europe. Um, so even if you can't get them now, investing or trying them, um, you know, buy, buying singles from time to time, um, you, can, you can accumulate your pencils if you really want, even if it takes, you know, a month. But um, I, f I find that quality makes the process more enjoyable. Um, it's easier to learn on, for example, Prisma colors. I won't say any other brand. Um, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but um, if your if your pencils are of good quality, you will get better results. You will enjoy it more. And that, for me, is a deal breaker. If I find the pencil I'm using annoying or not enough pigmented, I just won't use it. End of story. I don't care how much it costs. So that's my opinion. And the more practice you get, the nicer and better uh, results you will get with even cheap pencils. Um, you will you will be more skilled with your hand movements. Okay, please don't email me. <laughs> okay, next thing is know your pencils and play with them, try them. The more you use them, the better you will get at them. The more you will know your colors, your color combinations. And I never use my pencils without my color charts. <coughs> I will search for some uh, color chart links for you in the description below. But how will you get to know your colors if you don't see them swatched out? I'll show you a few. And I also laminated them so they, you know, they last. For inktons, I, I put them out dry and also activate it with water. For example, inktons can have different colors um, to the dry ones once um, activated with water. And some barrels don't reflect the colors of the pencils. So that's why I always say that swatch out your colors, take the time, it will help. Seeing your colors like that okay and last but not least how do you choose colors well let's talk about uh, basic color theory first mm -hmm. second so we had the reading with Pax coloring group so the color wheel um, the basic color theory is best described through um, a color wheel, in my opinion, and we can talk about three groups, primary colors, secondary colors, and tertiary, tertiary colors. Um, under uh, primary colors, um, we mean red, yellow, and blue. These are the colors that can be uh, mixed um, using other colors. Um, yes. And all other colors are derived from these three colors. So that's why they are called primary colors. Secondary colors are green, orange and purple. purple. These are the colors formed by mixing the primary colors. And tertiary colors are um, I'm just having my little notes here. Are the colors that are formed by mixing a primary, a primary and a secondary color. That's when you get the tertiary colors. Um, like yellow, orange, red, purple, greenish, blue. So um, that is why the hues are the two word names. 
because they are derived from the first and the secondary colors. Okay. And another um, definition which I find really useful and I use it for using colors and choosing colors are the complementary colors. Um, these colors are colors that are um, directly opposite each other, as you can see, for example, red, green, orange, blue, yellow, purple. <clears throat> um, these opposing colors create maximum contrast and can make coloring pages look very interesting and it can give your page some pep. <clears throat> for example, I love using um, tilt, tilt, was it tilt? Uh, nine, sorry tile no the word is not coming oh, okay well so whatever for example uh, mixing yeah teal and orange colors for example can make um, your page look really interesting and yeah last but not least my last <laughs> tip um, the five color rule if you find that your page is overwhelming and you can choose colors start with five or less colors um, this way you will keep your picture more cohesive if um, you know you don't color all the colors of the rainbow on there and i can show you some um, examples in my serene coloring book this is the book uh, my favorite book and also the book i spend <laughs> time on figuring out my colors um, before I jump into them because they are so um, detailed. So let's see here, five color rule. We have blue, red, orange, green, and some purple. Okay, red, uh, white and black doesn't count. And yeah, so your picture won't um, look so um, um, busy and it will look more cohesive. Again, what do we have here? Bring you closer a little bit. Um, we have pink, blue, um, pastel green, purple and brown. Again, the five color rule. Here we have orange, green, yellow, pink, orange, green, yellow, pink, mm, and blue. I don't know if, if I have more in here. I have more, but I gave them away. Ah, yeah, here we have one more. Um, pink, purple, green, blue. See? Trying not to go over um, the five colors. I have to color again. So, yeah, these are my main tips for you guys for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the description below. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, thank you for watching and take care. Have a nice day. Bye. Oh, wait, what did I forget? Oh yeah, one more thing, I'm so sorry. The color catalog, um, talking about colors, um, choosing colors, uh, the color catalog can help you massively. It can be purchased um, online. And I went crazy and printed all the colors out, just to show you a few. You can um, choose.
choose colors by keywords or colors and you get five colors. So even if you don't know what colors to use, you can look for some in the color catalog. There are like 200 colors or maybe more. Yeah, more, 300. Okay, so that's my last tip. The color catalog. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!